guys. I'd like to read from to you a portion from this book by Dave Hunt called What Love Is This? And I, and I keep talking about this book and showing it, but uh, I finally finished it yesterday. And so um, there, it's a really good book. I do suggest it, but you know, I'm going to take all the, the best arguments and stuff and incorporate them into studies myself. So you really won't need it by the time I get everything, all my teachings out. But uh, let's see. Well, I'm just going to read this passage. And it's in a chapter called Persuasion, the Gospel, and God. It's chapter 27. And What Love Is This? by Dave Hunt. And it says, A thorough examination of the passage in John 6, which is extolled as the clearest presentation of Calvinism in Scripture, fails to uncover any support for Tulip. But if Calvinism were actually true, then Jesus would indeed have been taunting and mocking the Jews exactly as Luther approvingly believed he did. According to Luther and Calvin, Christ said something like this to the Jews. You must believe on me as the bread of God come down from heaven to give life unto the world, but you lack the ability to believe unto salvation, and my Father is only going to give that ability to some of you. By world, of course, I really mean elect. Though no one recognizes that yet, one day it will be revealed through a system called Calvinism. You must, by faith, eat my flesh and drink my blood, i.e. believe that I, as God, became a real flesh and blood man to die for your sins, fulfilling the Levitical sacrifices which the priests ate. If you don't believe on me, you will perish in your sins. Of course, you can't believe on me unless my Father causes you to, and he gives that grace to only a select number. You naively think the gospel is a real offer of salvation. But in fact, it is intended the better to damn you. You couldn't believe on me if you tried. Come, you wretches, come. These are the terms, but are, but are all so totally depraved that you can't come to me except my Father regenerates you and gives you the faith to believe. And he has already decided in, past, in a past eternity, for reasons hidden in his will and to his glory, that he will only do that for some, for some, but not all of you. But you are all held accountable anyway. Yes, he could cause all of you to believe on me, but it is his good pleasure to rescue only some from hell. And don't think I'm going to die needlessly for those of you whom my father has predestined to eternal destruction. That would be a waste of my blood. I will die only for the sins of the elect. What love is this? And that's a uh, great question. <laughs> you know, what kind of love does Calvinism present, you know, that, that God has when he could save all, but he only chooses to save some? And so that's not the God of the Bible. And there are so many good arguments and so many good points in here. And it's just an awesome read. And uh, I'm sure I'll share with you some more over time, but, uh, you know, the reason that I got this book is because uh, I wanted to know more about John Calvin, the man, because on the internet, on Sermon Audio, and YouTube, and Google, there's all kinds of, you know, teachings dedicated to refuting Calvinism, you know, versed by, you know, by the, expo you know, refuting their false interpretations of verses and such. Um, so there's no shortage of, of that online. But I came across trying to study John Calvin the man, which isn't really that important, but it kind of is at the same time to get an idea of, you know, who he was and, and why he thought this way and stuff like that. And, you know, I came across the death of Michael Servetus. Servetus? I don't know how that's pronounced. Um, but... You know, there was, I found some contradicting websites saying that, you know, John Calvin was the, you know, was the man who, uh, you know, made, gave the death sentence to Michael and, and he wasn't, you know, he was, I mean, he was responsible for his death and he wasn't, etc. And, you know, of course, there are people who are against Calvinism that will say things about Cal Calvin and there's people who are Calvinists who will try to support him. And, and so I just, I really trust Dave Hunt as a teacher. I think he's a really good teacher, even though I don't agree with everything. 
but uh, I knew that he would have references for things that he said and that he would, you know, I, I trust him to be really honest in what he's saying and not just give like a one-sided view. And of course, there are a lot of Calvinists who have reviewed this book and he even sent copies to Calvinists after he wrote it so they could examine it and so, you know, he could make sure that he's representing them right and stuff. And he says that in his book and, and he, he shows some of the complaints that they had and then he talks about that and stuff. So this is a really fair and honest and really biblical you know, book. It's, uh, though there are a lot of Calvinists that are going to criticize it just because they believe the false doctrine of Calvinism. But uh, so I want to talk more about the man John Calvin in the future because that is the reason I got this book. But uh, right now, I'm not going to get into all that. But since I read it, it just means that I've read through it completely once. And now I'm going to go back through point by point and start um, constructing studies on my website, you know, for the whole tulip system of Calvinism and the history of John Calvin the man. So first I'll be working on the website, adding stuff together, and then once I get enough, I think, to do a video or something, then I'll do that. So that's coming. And now I'm going to move on to this, final authority. So I'm going to start learning about the history of the King James Bible and, and how I want to go about defending the King James Bible as the Word of God. You know, just like I said, I have questions about the rapture, and there has been false teachings on all sides. And there are a lot of things that are misunderstood between many, you know, teachers. And everything needs to be studied in detail. And I really need to look at all of the, the good arguments for the King James. You know, how do we look at the Greek and the Hebrew and everything? Should we take them into consideration and all this? So there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of different views. And uh, so I want to carve out my own, what I think, you know, we as Christians, what we should really... Uh, present, you know, as our defense of the King James Bible. And uh, now I'm also going to read this too. It's Internal Evidence of Inspiration by Harry Rimmer, which I read was a really good uh, defense from Scripture about the inspiration of the Bible and stuff. So, um, and I'm going to be listening to lots of other studies concerning that. But right now, I'm also, you know, as I'm reading these, taking in stuff about the King James Bible, I'm also going to start constructing stuff on uh, Calvinism now. So, I guess I'll just end the video there. I just wanted to share that portion from the book. So, thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.